Hey folks, welcome back to our channel. My name is Nigel and this is Off Grid Van Life. And in this video, we're going to be looking at three of my top selections for a DC to DC charger. Now, if you don't know what a DC to DC charger is, essentially it takes power from the alternator of your vehicle, whether that's a boat engine or a, a car, like a van or a, an overland or something like that, takes the power from that alternator and uh, con converts it into a consistent amperage and or uh, and, and and with a consistent uh, charge profile for a leisure battery so let's say your vehicle has an old lead acid style engine battery that's used to start the engine and in your habitation area you have a really good lithium ion phosphate leisure battery now um, it would not be advisable to connect that lithium ion phosphate battery directly to your alternator for a number of reasons one being that uh, the voltage requirements from the two different types of chemistries that you're connecting to your alternator are fairly different and just won't uh, sit nicely together and will cause problems and potentially damage both sides, including the alternator. And then the second reason is, depending on what your leisure battery is, if it's lithium ion phosphate, it'll absorb as much power as the alternator can give it and can then lead to the alternator having problems and failing and stuff like that. So it's always a good idea to have something in between. So Often what people want to do is they want to just use like a voltage sensitive relay or something like that, which is fine if you have two chemistries on your, your engine and your leisure that are very similar. So similar, basically the same chemistry, so that they need the same sort of voltage, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and also the same sort of age so that they uh, are in reasonable, reasonably comparable state of repair and, and condition, essentially. I always advise people to put in a DC to DC charger if they can, regardless of what chemistry they have in their system. And I, we've been using DC to DC chargers for a long time, for probably well over, over 10 years, even when we used to just use lead acid for the leisure system as well as the engine. So I definitely recommend that it's well worth doing if you can spare the cash. And really, we're not talking about tons of cash. You're not talking about like thousands. You're talking about a few hundred dollars, you can get a really good system. So I'm going to be looking at that in this video. And I'm not going into sort of the real detail comparison in terms of uh, the sort of uh, voltage and the amperage that they can receive and uh, the optimum running conditions in terms of the ambient temperature and all that sort of stuff. Not comparing all of those. Basically what I'm taking is my three top choices, uh, knowing that they are good, well-established companies who have had issues in the past, who have resolved them, they have good support for their products, they're innovating, they bring out new products, they bring out updates for existing products and apps and things like that. So they're well-established companies that are probably not going to go anywhere anytime soon. So I'm assuming that they basically, you get, a, you get one in the post, you're going to stick it into your vehicle and it's going to work. And if it's faulty, they're going to support it well. But the general reliability of these three options is very high. So I'm looking at things that stand out to me uh, that I would recommend and kind of stuff that I'm going through now. So with our project van, I'm in the process now of trying to decide what uh, DC to DC charger am I going to put into there? What's the best for the size battery and the type of battery we're putting in there? And uh, what's going to serve us best? So I'm going through this process. I haven't quite decided yet, but hopefully uh, you'll get something useful out of this. So let's jump into my spreadsheet here. Uh, and so I'm comparing Victron, Renergy and Votronic. Now, Victron is probably the wi most widely known uh, charging system across the board for 12 volt applications. Uh, Renergy is right up there with Vectron, not quite as popular. Vertronic are way less uh, popular and well known. Uh, Vertronic, if you don't know who they are, they are a German company, a very good quality charger. I, we've used them for many years. They are very, very good quality. Um, and <clears throat> I could definitely recommend them. Now, a uh, few things that I'm looking through here uh, the first being the price, obviously. Um, and to be honest, the price when it comes to, so for, for me personally, when I'm building out a van, I'd rather pay a little bit more and get something really good that really fits in what I'm trying to do than to compromise. So in my view, I don't look too much at the price, but uh, obviously I'm not going to buy like a charger that's thousands of dollars versus one that's a few hundred dollars uh, because that's just silly. 
But uh, when I look at the pricing here, I, I, in my opinion, Victron uh, are the best as far as value, ease of uh, install and uh, price. They, they are very good. To a certain extent with Victron, I think you do pay for the badge. They have a very strong reputation. They have a very strong resale value. When it comes to actually, if you ever sell your van or whatever that your vehicle is that you're putting them into, if you have Victron gear in there, the general consensus is, yeah, this person has clearly not skimped on the electrical components of their setup. Uh, so that is quite a nice thing to have. Um, and so they definitely carry their value in that regard. Renergy are generally considered as the sort of best and cheapest, if that makes sense. So the most cost effective, reasonably reasonable quality uh, charging system that you can get. So generally speaking, their prices are lower than Victron. Um, I don't think they are as good quality. They certainly aren't as renowned and recognized um, as being as good as, as Victron, um, but they're a good brand. Uh, I think they have had problems in the past with performance, but I think they've resolved those and they are in a good place now. Vertronic are definitely the most expensive. I think that they would easily rival Victron in terms of quality and performance, but you do pay a little bit more for them. I'm not sure exactly why they're more expensive, but they are very good. So if we look at the amperage, this is uh, I've, what I've tried to do here is to basically choose the highest amperage that I could find available for me to buy today if I wanted to at the time of recording this video. So currently the the, the highest capacity Victron uh, DC to DC charger that you can get is a 30 amp, which is fairly low. Um, it, it, uh, so for example, in the, the Project Van Delilah that we work on currently, we're putting a 560 amp hour battery into there. And so where this is important is uh, whatever you use from your battery, you have to be able to replace. So 560 amp hours, we're putting such a big battery in there because we are doing a lot of, um, most of the stuff is going to be running on electric. So we're putting an induction cooker in there, an induction um, oven. Uh, and uh, so <clears throat> let's say in a day you draw, let's say, 300 amp hours from that battery, basically nearly half the capacity of the battery, half the state of charge, 300 amp hours. If we just put one Victron 30 amp hour, sorry, 30 amp uh, DC to DC charger, we'd have to drive for 10 hours every day in order to fill that battery back up to 100% state of charge. And obviously you have multiple ways of charging. So we're also putting solar in that van and, and we'll have an uh, electrical hookup as well. So that when that's available, we can make use of that. But that's just an important point to note. Uh, in that realistically very heavy use, if there was little bit of not much solar, this charger would not actually keep up with, with filling that battery up if we were using more than 50% capacity of that battery every day. Now, then you get to the Renergy, the highest capacity I could find was a 60 amp, so then obviously double the Victron at, at less money, so that's very attractive. The Vertronic, interestingly, they do make a 90 amp charger, which is actually what I have in my personal camper van and I really love that thing like I know so I have 400 amp hours of lithium battery in my camper uh, and I know that if I drive for four hours and I've used 100% or let's say 75% 80% of the battery I can charge that battery from 0% state of charge all the way up to 100% state of charge in just over four hours which is a very attractive thought and so if we were to do something similar in the project van in Delilah with a similar um, charger we could potentially charge the battery fully uh, very quickly. So that's quite an attractive thought. The only trouble with that is that you it ha comes with a heavy price tag. So for the 50 amp version, they're selling it for 335 pounds or $450. For the 90 amp version, it's like 500-ish, $530, which is like 700, sorry, 530 pounds, which is like $700. So it comes with a high price tag. Um, one feature that I really like about the Vertronic, which none of the others do, is they trickle charge the engine battery. And so it's not the end of the world. Most of us are using our vehicles often enough, even through the winter, that you don't need to really worry about this. You don't really need to worry about your engine battery depleting. Uh, but so for the most part, if you were just going to park your van up for a month over winter and not actually drive it, not start it, then you'd probably want to just manually put a, a charger onto the engine battery just to keep it trickle charged. 
but uh, the Votronic is quite nice in that regard that it actually does this. So let's say your leisure battery is charged by your solar to 100% state of charge and your van is just sitting there. Essentially what this means is that once your leisure battery gets to 100% state of charge, if there's enough capacity and enough charge coming in from places like the solar or the EHU or whatever, it then trickle charges it back to the engine battery to make sure that your engine battery uh, is maintained. So that's quite an attractive thing, but again, it's just a it's just a gimmick, really. The reality is, is that most of the time it's not actually that necessary because we're using our van often enough that we don't need it. Bluetooth, uh, this is where Victron really take the cake and are leaders of the pack is when it comes to Bluetooth, their apps are very good, well-designed, just simple, easy to use. I really like them. Renergy, I've never actually looked at their app and, and really actively used it. I believe that you can get like a Bluetooth module uh, for that plugs into the Renergy chargers that then gives you access to some information in the app. Um, I suspect it's nowhere near as good as uh, Victron, but I stand to be corrected there. Vertronic for this particular charger do not support Bluetooth. Personally, uh, I don't. I don't think this is critical, but it is nice to have when you have. If you've if you've ever set up a Victron charger, it's really nice just doing that on your phone and the app, seeing what what's happening and stuff, being able to get onto it while it's charging that sort of thing. But having said that, half the time I don't know how much I would actually use that because I use the Bluetooth app on the BMS on my batteries. So I don't know how valuable that would be, but I do I do really like the Victron app. So that's uh, something that's quite nice. Low temperature temperature protection. So this is one of the areas that uh, Vertronic are very good at. So they have a little temperature probe, which for lithium batteries you need to install. And essentially you put that onto the negative terminal of your battery and uh, it has low temperature, low temperature protection. So if, it hits zero degrees Celsius or 32 degrees Fahrenheit, the charger will not actually charge the battery. So it's quite nice from that regard if you have lithium batteries and that you have two levels of temperature protection. So you have your charger and your BMS, if your BMS supports that as well, which is quite nice. The other two don't, they just have a temperature cutoff uh, in terms of overheating. So if the ambient temperature is above a certain amount, then they won't charge your battery just to protect it, that sort of thing. So if you like somewhere in the desert or somewhere very hot, they'll step in and help in that regard. So all of these things considered, one of the points that is often discussed and thought about in terms of buying a DC to DC charger is the ease of install. Now, when I look at these, I would probably uh, wager that the Victron is the easiest to install for a number of reasons and I'll list them. One is the app makes it very easy to set it up, choose the right charge profile for the type of battery that you have so that you make sure that your battery is looked after and protected and charged at the right uh, voltages, all that sort of stuff. And also because uh, the Victron is capable of running very easily on either just sensing the, um, the amperage and whether it's receiving charge uh, from the alternator, but it also can take in a signal from either BMS or from your, your D+, plus, which is your ignition signal on your alternator. And so the little green things here, you can unplug that and then put in the signal that comes from your BMS or from your alternator D plus signal, which is quite nice. So, but, but overall the Victron is very easy to install. Renergy it is also fairly easy to install. It's not as configurable in terms of the um, charge profiles and stuff like that as the, the Victron, it, or at least it's not as, as easy to select different options and stuff like that. I believe the Renergy needs the D plus signal. I don't know if it works without that. Of course you can just bypass that and just send uh, you basically use the same uh, ch uh, voltage or, or, or essentially just have a line coming from the, the alternator positive just straight to that D plus uh, uh, opening terminal on your Renergy, which obviously it, all it does is receive a 12 volt signal to know when to turn on and off that sort of thing. So you can bypass that fairly easily, but I'd say that the Renergy is not quite as easy to install as the Victron. The Vertronic can operate without the D plus signal. You can do it just based on voltage, but it, they recommend that you use the D plus signal if you can, because it performs better. The Vertronic also is not quite as intuitive to install as the Victron, because essentially you have these little switches on the side of the unit here, which you have to get right. So you just toggle these backwards and forwards. And it's a little bit fiddly because you're going through a manual that was written by somebody whose native language is not English, so the translation is not 100%, so you're kind of like uh, figuring your way through the instructions. I mean, it's not bad. 
but it just does take a little bit more thought and understanding. Uh, but you're going through toggling these switches backwards and forwards to set everything up uh, as you're installing it or just before you install it. But I'd say the Vertronic is probably the hardest out of them to install. But in terms of reliability, once it's in there, I've been using mine in my van for over two years now, and uh, it's been great. Not had any problems. It's been, been really good. I've enjoyed it. Um, not had to change anything or access it or anything like that. But that's where the Vectron is quite nice with the app in that you could very easily just see the state of things and uh, and see where things are at. Whereas you don't have that with the Vertronic, obviously, because it's just, uh, just switches there and just some lights on the unit. So in my case, I have it in a locker inside my camper and I don't ever even open that locker unless there's a problem. So, yeah. So it, in terms of what I would recommend, if you want reliability, something that holds its value, ease of install, probably Victron. Their price tag is not crazy, although you are paying a little bit for the label, but that's where it holds its value. So that if you then resell your van later on, it will be quite a nice advertising piece to be able to say, oh yeah, all my electrics are Victron, for example. If you're looking for a budget option uh, that's not too difficult to install, but is reliable, then Renergy is a great option. And if you want a good high performing unit that offers really high capacity as an 90 amps or thereabouts, then the Vertronic is a really good option for that. So yeah, one other point though, this is just for a basic DC to DC charger, nothing else. Uh, Vertronic have options of what they call a triple charger, which is where it integrates your electric hookup. So your 210, uh, your 110 or your 240 volt input AC to convert it to DC, your solar charge controller and your DC to DC charger all in one unit. So I've done a video about that previously on the channel where I installed one of those into my dad's camper. And those are very good, really nice to use. A similar sort of setup pro system where you toggle those switches backwards and forwards, but it's nice to have everything in one unit. So it makes it really neat and tidy. The downfall obviously is if that thing packs up and dies, then you've got no charger whatsoever. So that's where having split out separate chargers is quite a Active. But yeah, that's an overview. Hopefully that's been helpful to uh, if you're trying to decide which of these to go for. Uh, but yeah, if you've got any questions or anything that you'd like us to cover on any of these sort of topics, then let us know in the comments. Otherwise, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Cheers.